Bob's panning the camera back now, just kind of taking a look at around the uh, cabin just to see how things look after a uh, crew's lived in Dragon for uh, an evening. We uh, Last night, uh, the way things went, we had our normal uh, activation, got out of our suits, had some uh, a little bit of dinner, then uh, reconfigured the cabin for uh, orbit ops, did a couple uh, other events, including the media event last night, and then we uh, proceeded to get ready for bed, which uh, in space takes takes a little bit longer uh, than I think uh, on planet Earth. Uh, we had to pull out sleeping bags and sleeping clothes and all those kinds of things got kind of cleaned up and then uh, we ended up sleeping uh, just like we are right now right in our chairs which was actually a pretty comfortable night's sleep. One of the things we did uh, yesterday was actually manually fly Crew Dragon uh, for the first time and uh, I want to compliment the teams uh, and Hawthorne, uh, just a spectacular job uh, with the simulator as the vehicle flew exactly like the simulators out in Hawthorne. So just want to thank the teams that did all the work on that uh, particular uh, training device as well as all the modeling in the GNC. It really worked out well and uh, was a joy to fly. And I'm guessing it was the first time a space vehicle was flown with a touchscreen before. So. We got that going for us. I'm going to hand the uh, mic over to Bob. Well, hello, folks. Uh, welcome aboard the Dragon Capsule Endeavor. Uh, Doug and I had a good night's sleep last night. Uh, we were surprised, I think, at how well we actually slept aboard the vehicle. A little bit quieter than uh, than space shuttle, a little bit more, I guess, environmentally controlled. So we had a, uh, didn't have CO2 pockets or things like that building up, giving us uh, congestion, which was uh, super awesome. He talked a little bit about the changing and going back and forth between our suits and our sleepwear and the clothes we're in now and uh, managing all those things. But we've managed to keep the ship uh, pretty tidy at this point as we went through the, the night's activities and then got into uh, our preparation for today. Uh, we did get our suits dried out, get them packed away into the uh, black bags that are stowed in the outboard seats. You can, if you look closely, you can see we've got them strapped it in with the the regular straps that you'd use for uh, riding into uh, orbit, and then over against uh, kind of that that former window location, there is a uh, you can see Doug's uh, sleep bag there uh, next to his uh, crew notebook, and so that's how we're keeping all of our our laundry constrained floating all around today. Doug mentioned the uh, manual flying and, and how well the uh, simulator matched that. Uh, I'll tell you that uh, for the ride uphill on Ascent, they just are never able to capture that at the simulator. And so I think uh, Doug and I were uh, talking about all the observations that we had all the way uphill um, while it was uh, an exciting ride. I think we got a, a couple of uh, minor surprises just in terms of the way the vehicle is kind of moving and, and shaking and uh, taking you into orbit, you can tell that it's uh, it's fighting against the Earth as it, uh, it makes it way, its way into space, and that's just something a simulator can never, never truly simulate. Uh, we do have a, a friend on board with us. We introduced you to Trimmer yesterday uh, when we did our uh, little activity with the camera. Trimmer also had a good night's sleep. I know that uh, both of our sons are pretty happy about that uh, with their pet dinosaur making it into orbit. and and having a good night uh, in zero gravity. We plan once we get on board the space station to reunite uh, Tremor with Earthy. 
and plan to bring both of them back to Earth. I know that uh, we'll get Trimmer through the safety brief and get all the education that's required so that uh, uh, we'll have a, a safe operation while we're on board the uh, space station should anything come up that uh, we need to be prepared for. I know that Trimmer's also looking forward to helping us out with uh, EVA preparations uh, just in case we need to do a spacewalk, and so we're uh, looking forward to that as well. Two minutes until LOS. Let's see, I think we'll go ahead and bring the uh, camera out a little bit and we'll show you uh, what's going on underneath the seats on board the Dragon Capsule Endeavor. We've got uh, uh, quite a bit of cargo that we'll be taking to the space station. We've got some hard racks as well. The uh, hard stowage that we have can also be swapped, these uh, hard containers here, for powered cargo, which lets us bring back refrigerated things from the International Space Station. And if you're super lucky, you don't have that this time, but I bet you some crew will take ice cream to the International Space Station with those. Uh, that'll be exciting for those crews to get to have that. We, we do have some uh, emergency equipment uh, labeled in red, which is uh, nice to have and easy to see, as, as well as the other stowage bags that we have uh, down here as well. Uh, I don't know if you were watching closely during our strap-in and uh, insertion on the on the pad, but uh, we did have the seats rotate at, at one point. We were down in an easier configuration to ingress the vehicle in, so when we climbed aboard, the seats were rotated down, and after we were strapped in, they rotated up. And our activities, and so those seats uh, will rotate again uh, in preparation for splashdown uh, when we eventually come home. So if any of you all know uh, Uncle uh, Kirk Shireman, as we call him, you could uh, ask him uh, when we're coming home and uh, make sure that uh, he starts having a plan for us. Appreciate you having them uh, coming on board again with us on Endeavor and enjoyed showing you around both inside and out. Uh, the next time uh, we'll be on video for you, we'll hopefully be on board Chris Cass in just hours. So we appreciate you stopping by and from Endeavor.